Hello, in this video we're going to talk about using an NDI discovery server to optimize your NDI network environment. So let's just jump in and see how that works. So on my Windows desktop here, uh, I'm just going to go to the NDI website and download the SDK. Now notice this is the software development kit for NDI. This is not the NDI tools. I've already got it pulled up here. NDI video and they've got a link to it right on the home page. Now, unfortunately, the discovery server is only available in the SDK, so that's what you have to go get. Um, you fill out the form and it's not horrible, but like all things NDI, you have to sign up for newsletters and things in order to get it. But once you've downloaded and installed the SDK, then it actually shows up in your system. And here, here's the full path, uh, at least on this machine that it gets installed to. And all you get is this little executable. It doesn't put shortcuts anywhere. Uh, you wouldn't know that it's there. In fact, the SDK doesn't really do anything. Just install the defaults in the SDK. You're not gonna use any part of it other than the discovery server, most likely. But after you've installed it, then navigate to where it installed this tools and you can usually find it on the C drive, program files, NDI, NDI5 tools, and the discovery service. So all you have to do to use this discovery service is simply double click that. Now I usually double click it and once it's running, which I'll show you here, it'll launch a window that looks like this. Of course, it's been running for a while, but after it's running, I usually just pin it to the taskbar. That way it's always available and easily accessible on my Raven system. But you want to start the discovery service after you start up your computer and before you start Raven. Why? Because all of your NDI devices, you're going to configure them so that they connect to and register with the discovery service. And we're going to configure Raven to talk to the discovery service as well. So let's do that now. So now that we have our discovery service running, it's installed, it's running, we know how to run it uh, every time we reboot the Raven computer. Now we're actually going to configure uh, or start to configure devices to register with it. And the way we do that in Windows, at least, is through the NDI Access Manager. And when you usually open that up, it's on the Groups tab. But if you go to Advanced and you check the box Discovery Servers, and then you type in the IP address of this Raven computer. Now, in this particular case, you can get that by doing an IP config command from a command line. And you see that this is the private IP address to find out here, that's fine. And you put in the private IP address of the Raven computer. Now I have two network interfaces on this particular machine. I've got one that's wired to my video network and then I've got a wireless connection that connects to my uh, internet connected network. But um, in this case, I want to use the IP address of the interface that's connected to my video network, okay? So what this does, it's a little unclear about what this actually does, but what this does is any NDI software that runs on this computer that uses NDI will register itself with the discovery service at this IP address, which happens to be on this machine. So in order for this to take effect, we have to OK out of the Access Manager window and reboot the computer. So let's just pretend we've rebooted the computer and now we're going to launch uh, other NDI things to register with the discovery service. So let's jump over. I'm, I've logged into, for example, this BirdDog P200 camera and I've gone to the System tab and NDI Network Settings. Notice there's a setting here to turn on an NDI discovery server. And again, I put in the same IP address that I put in in the NDI Access Manager. I hit Apply. Um, I'm looking over here at this Ada camera and in Settings and Video Transmission, I have defined or I've turned on the discovery server again and typed in the same IP address, which is of course the IP address of the Raven computer. Saved that, applied it. So those are ready to go. Uh, on my ProPresenter machine, which is another Windows machine, I've also used NDI Access Manager on that machine to say, hey, use a discovery server. And guess what IP address I used? Yep, the same one that I'm using everywhere else because I want that machine to register with the discovery service on this system. Now, after I've done that with all of my NDI devices, 
and the discovery service is running, you will notice now that all of my devices show up in NDI Studio Monitor. So if I were to pick one of these devices, Studio Monitor knows exactly how to get at it because it's talking to the local discovery service and it immediately connects to the stream. If I were to pick a different stream, boom, it immediately connects to that. Boom, it immediately connects to that. So this is how we make sure that all of our devices are talking to the discovery service so that they can be found and utilized very quickly in the Raven software. And we'll notice if we close that, the number of listeners drops. And if I launch Raven, boom, the number of listeners increases again because Raven registers itself as an NDI listener. And when we start it, which I'll do right here, We've added a source. Why? Because there was an NDI output defined in Raven, and so Raven registered that output device as an input source in the NDI network. And now, if I pull up Studio Monitor, and I'm looking at all of the available outputs, and I go to that particular output, boom, there it is. So this is how we use the NDI Discovery Service to optimize NDI utilization on your video network, whether it's across cameras or uh, machines running Windows, uh, any device on your IP network, we want to use a discovery service because it just makes things faster and more reliable. So that's it. Hope you enjoyed watching this video. See you on the next one.